Practice Test Two, Page Forty Eight, Section Two. Repeat sentence. You will hear some sentences. Please repeat each sentence exactly as you hear it. You will hear each sentence only once. The arts magazine is looking for a new assistant editor. The lecture will deal with the influence of technology on music. Make sure you correctly cite all your sources. There are hundreds of clubs and societies to choose from. Does the college refectory offer vegetarian dishes on a daily basis? All essays and seminar papers submitted must be emailed to your tutor. He was not the only one to call for legal reform in the 16th century. The Drama Society is now auditioning for parts in the student play. There is a position available for a junior lecturer in media studies. There will be a significant rise in tuition fees starting next year.
Practice Test 2, page 54, section 2. Retell lecture. You will hear a lecture. After listening to the lecture, please retell what you have just heard from the lecture in your own words. You will have 40 seconds to give your response. Lecture A. Alexis de Tocqueville, as we have noted, appears to have had some appeal to both ends of the political spectrum, left and right, or rather, both have found him to be useful for their purposes in certain circumstances. His rational acceptance of the new forces of democracy brought about by the American and French revolutions made him an icon of left-wing liberals. However, during the Cold War, that is, from the end of World War II until the collapse of communism, he was adopted by some leading thinkers on the right. So there are two sides to his political philosophy and the man himself that we need to look at. Now, I would suggest that de Tocqueville's biography is important here. You must always bear in mind, when reading him, that he was an aristocrat, and one whose family had suffered in the French Revolution. He wasn't your typical aristocrat, because his politics differed from others of his family and social rank. He abandoned the Catholic Church and married beneath his class. Yet he never quite threw off the prejudices of that class. However, and what is important, he did recognise and believe that the tendency of history, which in those days could be traced back to the Middle Ages, was towards the levelling of social ranks and more equal and democratic conditions. The French Revolution had in the end brought Napoleon, whom he hated, but democracy would inevitably come to France. His trip to America was to see democracy in practice, make note of its shortcomings and errors, and then find safeguards against them. Lecture B. What I want to look at today is the question of how much technology, if um, a pen can indeed be called technology, perhaps I should say the instrument of writing, affects a writer's style and level of production. I also want to consider other factors that may have an effect on prose styles such as personality, educational background and so on. Now, production levels aren't so hard to measure in relation to the writing instrument used. The quill pen, for instance, would need continual refilling and resharpening, which led to a leisurely, balanced style of prose, full of simple sentences. Writing took a lot longer than now, and the great novelists of the 18th century, Fielding, Smollett, Richardson, had a relatively small output, though some of their books ran to enormous length. By the middle of the 19th century, the fountain pen had been invented, it didn't need such constant refilling, which can account for the more flowing, discursive style of, say, Dickens and Thackeray, as well as their tremendous output. Then came the typewriter, whose purpose, once you got the hang of it, was to speed up the writing process and was therefore much favoured by journalists. This, it seems to me, gave rise to a short-winded style characterised by short sentences. A short prose style, if you like, Dictating machines and tape recorders led, as one novelist complained, to writers becoming too conversational, rambling and long-winded. Henry James, although he didn't use these machines, dictated his later novels, and, well, some might agree with this accusation. Well, it looks as though we're going to have to leave word processors, computers, and, of course, the way film and its narrative techniques have affected writing style for another day. Lecture C. It is almost impossible these days not to include photography in a course on the history of art. I disagree with people such as Walter Benjamin, who suggest that technology and art don't go well together. Photography, with its realism, its accurate representation of the thing in front of you, initially deprived many artists of their subject matter, forcing them to look in new ways, no bad thing. 
True, mass-produced images of, say, the Mona Lisa obviously can't provide the same experience as seeing the real painting. On the other hand, there are photographs which, to my mind, are far more thought-provoking and have greater emotional impact than a painting of the same subject ever could. Some people say that the traditional idea of an artist with a trained hand and eye is old-fashioned. They no longer believe that an artist needs specialist knowledge, but rather that he or she can simply point a camera at a scene and record it. However, on the one hand, that ignores the creative skill involved in producing photographs. On the other hand, it also ignores the fact that even in the past, painters used various technological aids. For example, the Dutch painter Vermeer used a camera obscura to help him create his images. We'll go into that later, but for now, I want to look at the documentary and cultural value of photography. Practice test 2, page 54, section 2. Answer short question. You will hear some questions. Please give a simple and short answer to each one. Often just one or a few words is enough. What emergency service is usually called when someone is in trouble at sea? Ambulance or Coast Guard? Name a month that falls between April and June. What word describes moving a program or other material from a website to your computer? What do we call a picture that a doctor takes to see inside your body? What crime has someone stealing items from a shop committed? Shop fitting or shoplifting? If someone is feeling a little ill, they may say they are feeling under the what? Who is the person in charge of a football match? What do we call the last game in a sporting competition which decides the champion? What is the general term for paintings of the countryside or natural views? Which of these would probably be found in an office? A printer, a blanket, or a nail brush? Practice test 2, page 51, section 2. Describe image. Model answers. Image A. This pie chart shows how many hours a year people spend on average visiting their local doctor in England. At 35 hours a year, people in the southeast spend the largest amount of time, with the east not far behind at 33 hours a year. People in the northeast and the northwest at 13 and 15 hours respectively, spend the least time with their local doctor.
People in the West visit their doctor for 17 hours a year, while the figure for the Southwest is 20 hours. Image B. This chart shows how many students, on average, are late for college on each day of the working week. It is noticeable, but not surprising, that Monday is the day when the largest number of students is late, as many as 30. Friday has the second largest number of late students, with an average of about 17. Wednesday follows with about 15 latecomers. Tuesdays and Thursdays are roughly the same. With the fewest late arrivals, numbering about ten. Image C. This table compares how males and females over age sixteen use their time doing various things each day. It covers many kinds of activities, including how much time they spend sleeping, eating, and watching TV. One striking difference is that men have about five and a quarter hours leisure time. Whereas women have about half an hour less than this, the biggest difference is time spent doing housework. Women spend three hours a day doing housework, while men spend just under half that amount. Otherwise, there is not much difference between the time males and females spend on other activities. Image D. This graph compares the proportion of households and businesses in the UK with internet access and broadband connection to those in the rest of the European Union. It shows that the UK is about 10% above the EU average for internet access at home. Just over 30% of households in the EU have a broadband connection, while the UK is 12% above the EU average. For businesses, there is less difference. In fact, internet access is equal in both the UK and EU at more than 90 percent, while for broadband connections, the UK is only slightly higher. Image E. The chart shows population change in the 12 years from 1998 to 2010. It shows both natural change, which I assume means births and deaths, and net migration, and how these contribute to population growth. Between 1998 and 2002, there was a decline in growth due to natural change, but after that, there was a steady rise during the rest of the period, peaking at an increase of just under 250,000. Figures for net migration peaked in 2005 at over 250,000, then fell to under 200,000 in 2009, before picking up again to reach about 225,000 in 2010. In general, the population rose over the period covered. Image F. This pie chart. Shows how much time students spend reading various types of text. It is surprising to see that, given that they are students, only seven percent of reading time is spent on reference books. Fifteen percent of their time is spent reading on the internet. Newspapers take up the largest portion of students' reading time at thirty-two percent, closely followed by fiction at twenty-six percent. The third most popular kind of reading matter is magazines, which take up twenty percent of students' reading time. Practice test two, page fifty-four, section two, retell lecture, model answers, lecture A. People on both the left and right wings politically have adopted De Tocqueville. He appealed to the left wing because he accepted democracy, and he appealed to the right wing during the Cold War. Although he was an aristocrat, his views differed from his family and other aristocrats. He believed that in the future people would be more equal. Lecture B. The instrument writers use affects their style. Writing with a quill took a long time, so writers tended to write in short sentences. 
They had a balanced style, and their output was small. Writing with a fountain pen led to a more flowing style. Writing with a typewriter produced a more journalistic style, and writers produced much more work. Some people feel that writers who dictated their work, such as Henry James, became too conversational. Lecture C. The lecturer said that art and technology can exist together. She said that photography forced artists to see in new ways, and photographs can have a lot of emotional impact. Some people think photography is easier than traditional art. However, they don't realize that it takes skill to produce good photos, and that many traditional artists, such as Vermeer, use technology to help them create their images.